is Rob Tubbett for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Delighted to be joined today by the big cheese, Ted Cheeseman. We're here at the Matchroom Gym in Essex. How are you, Ted? Yeah, all well, good, mate. You? Yeah. Not bad, thank you. Not bad. Happy New Year. How was your Christmas and New Year? Yeah, it's good because um, it was my baby's first Christmas, but I was glad to get over with to get back in camp and get the uh, ball rolling for this year. You don't strike me as somebody who's very happy sitting around eating celebrations and watching bad TV around Christmas. Is that right? Yeah, nah, <laughs> ain't no good to me. Um, I had a laugh over Christmas. I had a good break after the last fight and stuff, but you can only have so much fun before you want to get back to business. The last fight, Scott Fitzgerald. Talk to me about the last fight. You had a little bit of time now to process it to go back I'm sure you have done thoughts still the same on the fight as they were initially yeah I still I still think I won it at least by seven rounds of five but I'm not dwelling on it um, I never had the greatest year last year with the fights I had but I had a very good learning year um, and picked up a lot of good experience last year with the calibre opponents I was in with and the type of fights I had so I'm still only 24 and I think this year will be a big year for me um, because I'll have a couple of fights where they ain't so important, like not in, they're all important but ain't so big and then I'll be straight back in the big fights so I picked up all the experience I need, I'm probably one of the most experienced like middleweights in the country at, at the domestic level um, so all I've got to do is I uh, showed everyone last year I can box, I can fight, I can take a shot, I've got a good engine so now I've got to put it all in to mix, mix with each other and work it out right for when the big fights come again. You mentioned that, and I think it's, it's important to note that you are still only 24, despite the calibre of opponents that you've boxed. I mean, last year you boxed with Sergio Garcia, Kieran Conway, Scott Fitzgerald. Yeah. So that's a, obviously a, a very, very good stretch of fights. What is it? You mentioned that you learned in those fights. Obviously, you're unfortunate in, well, certainly in the Scott Fitzgerald fight in a lot of people's eyes. What did you learn from that, both as a fighter and as a person last year? Um, I think, again, I've showed everyone I'm mentally strong because I had two fights on a bounce where as much as the Sergio Garcia, Sergio Garcia thing, I had personal reasons and things weren't going right, but I got that out of the way with, then come straight back into camp, got my head right, boxed Kieran Conway, thought I'd done enough to win, never got my decision, got a draw, so then I... Pushed on again for another big fight, had another camp, um, worked on a few things. Box Fitzgerald, who everyone was rated as probably one of the best uh, like middleweights in the domestic scene. And again, I thought I won. So I should, in my head, I should have had two good wins at the end. But having them two setbacks, I've showed that I'm mentally strong to still be back, in, back training, back in camp and pushing to get back to where I want to be. The light middleweight division domestically is thriving. You've got yourself, obviously Scott Fitzgerald and Kieran Conway, who you've boxed. Anthony Fowler is still hovering around in and around the mix. What's going to be the next step for you? I mean, obviously, I'm sure you want the Scott Fitzgerald fight some 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 point. Beg your pardon. In 2020, but what's the plan for you in the in the immediate future? Um, the ma the main thing now is to just keep on learning because, to be honest. Um, like I boxed a lot on a back foot and everything as a, as an amateur, and um, since I've been pro, I, I I ain't really done a lot of back foot boxing. But then I showed I could do it against Scott. Worked on a camp on it and done it. But the thing was was that it's sort of I was learning on the job because I never had two warm up fights before the fight to work on the style. I went straight in a big twelve round fight and had to like put practice what like do what I've practiced straight in a big fight so it's hard to do that but I still felt I'd done enough but it's all learning because now I've showed as again like I said earlier I showed I can box I can fight now it's mixing the two up together at the right time in fights sometimes in the fights and I, I should I should be fighting sometimes I should be boxing and um, I don't have really no regrets about the fight but maybe at the end where everything was going so well boxing on the back foot I was trying to get not get drawn into a fight as much as sometimes on people saying I stood there a bit too much at the end um, between like the 8 and 12. I weren't standing there, I was getting chased where Scott was like trying to bring the fight back round for him. So I couldn't just literally run. I was having to stand at certain points, but really and truly what I should have done, knowing that I've got a good engine, 
I shouldn't have kept moving on my feet as much. I should have stood my ground a bit more uh, and um, fought at the end and, and tried to break his heart and fought more at the end because I still had a lot in the tank. As much as I look tired, it's, it's when you're moving on your feet for 12 rounds when you, you've never um, that, tried that before. So, And I'm not against just an, a warm-up fight or an easy fight. It's, it's a very competitive fight. So that's the only thing I... Uh, now I've been working on that. I'll probably have a couple of warm-up fights this year. Still working on my style, what, I'm been, what I've been working on. And um, once I perfect that, I don't think there'll be no one domestically that can beat me. You mentioned kind of the way you boxed as an amateur. I'd spoken to people who have had you in for sparring um, and they'd said that, you know, very talented boxer on the outside, which you hadn't always shown in the ring. Um, now you've done that, albeit unfortunately you didn't get the decision against Scott Fitzgerald you showed that you could box like that for 12 rounds how much of a benefit is that going to be to you going forward going back to kind of the the origins of your style in the amateurs and knowing that you can pull that off for 12 rounds yeah um, it's really good because it's it's like you get into habits of stuff and I was in, in a habit of being a bully coming forward chasing after fights pushing fights and sometimes it don't always work and I wish I could start last year again and go over it, but you can't. I just got to let it go and push on. And like that's why I said uh, all the experience I've got now, I've got a lot of ring experience. I've had, I've had a lot of big fights, even from the Carson Jones fights, the Senior Byfield, Paul Lupton. They're all like good domestic or and good fights, good level fights. So I've had a lot of rounds. I've had a lot of. Um, ring generalship I've, I've learned a lot of ring generalship so now this year for me it's about taking all that into into this year and using it using the experience I've got because the other fighters ain't got the experience that I've got and I'm the youngest probably or me and Kieran Conway but I'm one of the youngest out of all, all of them so I've got plenty of time and I'm sort of ahead of most of them in experience and what I've done so it's just about making sure I bring that into the ring this year. What fight is it that you're looking for this year? You mentioned having the two warm-up fights before going into a big fight. Is it the Scott Fitzgerald rematch? Is that top of the priorities? Um, yeah. It, it's like Listen, it's how the year pans out because obviously I think Tony just wants to work with me on what we've been working on. Obviously, like I said, mixing the boxing and the fighting together. Not because I've shown... I can fight all fight and I've shown I can box all fight. It's about changing it in the fight when I need to stand a fight, fight when I need to move, bo um, box. But um, you got to see what happens. I think Scott and Fowler are going to have a, a rematch um, and you don't know who's going to win. It's a 50-50 fight again. I think if it's Scott's fit and whatever, I think he can win the fight. But you don't know. Um, Fowler's obviously going to a new team at some point. So you don't know what they're going to add to his game. So it's a good fight to watch. Then Kieran Conway obviously wants another shot at the British title. And to be honest, I've won the British title already. I, I'm not in a rush. I've I've been in too much of a rush my whole career. Sort of like what I've done really and truly last year. I pushed for the Garcia fight, watching on on, on tape. He didn't look as good. Obviously... My head weren't there, I, I, but I hadn't really been affected too much before that. I still trained hard, but then when, like when I got in the ring, it just all sort of went to pot. But I just got to, I got to see how the the fights pan out because I don't know. By the end of the year, Kieran Conway might be British champion, and I might be trying to challenge him. But it's 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 the matter of fact of getting my fights what I need out the way with, and then by the time when. Um, Tony think the time's right to push for the British title again seeing who the champion is then uh, it ain't all about getting the Scott rematch because as much as um, I think I won and you want to try and get it right it don't matter it's about making the right decisions and if Scott ain't fit, uh, if Scott ain't British champion by the end of the year when I want to be pushing for it again I'll, I won't be pushing for that fight I'll be pushing for who's champion so it's all about just learning this year again, learning, taking the stuff into the fights, uh, using what we've been working on in the gym, taking it into the fights, and then pushing for, for the titles by, by mid to the end, end of this year. And then from there, 
2021 I can push big, but before I was always looking at short term, short term, short term. But now it's a long term because I'm 24 and I've still got a lot of years. So I've got to make sure I make the right decisions because I don't want to be making too many more hiccups. Otherwise, I'll, as much as I'm mentally strong now, it starts becoming a hard ask to get to where you need to if you're not producing what you should be. Having already won the British title, and you mentioned the win over Carson Jones, which came very early in your career. Obviously, yeah. he's a very seasoned campaigner, been in with a lot of big names. The fact that you've already achieved those things early on in your career, does that take a little bit of the pressure off now? Now you're in this kind of, I hesitant to call it a rebuilding phase, but something similar to that. Does it take a little bit of the pressure off? Yeah, definitely, because I've proved myself already. I ain't like, i uh, um, got easy fights and just once it's got a big fight, I've lost. Um, I've proved myself... I've had the hiccups, I've had a, quite a bit of bad luck and it's only so long before things start twisting your way and I think this year I'm going to have a great year but it's only the start and I'm, I'm training really hard already and um, when the time comes I know I'll be right this time. Final one on the kind of Scott Fitzgerald situation, kind of back end of last year. After the fight you left the ring, do you regret that? Not hanging around for the decision? No, nah, not at all, because um, I think you have to do things like that sometimes because as much as some people don't like it, you get a lot of credit from support and the people who are there who are to do with it sort of know how, how it made you feel when, and they know your true reaction. If I just sit there and think, when you, when you believe you won and you're confident you won, and then it goes so wide against you, um, you should be gutted. It, why do I want to stand there and do that? I've tra What people don't realise is it ain't like one big night we have and that's it. We do train for weeks and weeks before, put our, our, our heart and soul into it, dedicate everything to it, don't eat rubbish, don't go out drinking, don't go out partying with your mates for so long time. And you're, I'm only a young man, so you're, you're missing out on a lot of stuff, making a lot of sacrifices. And that happens to you. It, it guts you really and truly. Like when I had the interview that night and stuff, I, I was adamant that I, I wouldn't box again. But I thought about it over the next week and stuff. And I said to myself, like, look, I'm not going to let a bit of corruption bring me down. I'm going to prove everyone wrong. And the people that like, I felt at the time, I felt I was getting pushed out of the sport because when you have one bad decision against you, you think, oh, it like, might be something. But then when you have two in a row and you've trained so hard, you've changed your life around, you've you've um, changed your style, everything. I've boxed one fight and I've fought the other fight and both times neither of the styles were right for, for the judges. So for me, it was like, no matter what I'm doing, it ain't working. For, uh, uh, so what do I do? But now... <sighs> I've got a I've got a young baby. I've got a, like I've got a family, um, and I'm doing it all for them. Do you know what I mean? It, it's all for them as much as it's for me, because all the years I've put into it, to just chuck it away like that, it'd be a waste. And I've got to keep pushing to get as far as I possibly can. And until I really get beat, like I did against Sergio Garcia, with my head being right and everything being right, then that's when you know. It's probably you're either stepped up too far of a level or you're just not good enough. But for now, I know I am I am good enough at the domestic level. And I've got the experience now, I've got the ring generalship. I know how good I've got to be to get to European level because I've already had the test. So I've got all what I need to know and I, I, I know what I need to work on and I know what I need to do. So it's just about putting the practice into play now, do you know what I mean? Okay, well, we look forward to seeing you back in action, Ted Cheeseman. Um, wishing you a better 2020 yeah. than you had in 2019. Um, but yes, thanks very much for speaking to Boxing Social. Look forward to catching up with you soon, mate. Cheers, thanks a lot, Rob. Cheers.